Hey guys, welcome back to the Malware Analysis Bootcamp. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, the resources section and why it's important to actually check it out or to examine it. Um, and of course, we'll be taking a look at the tools we'll be using. So let's start off with understanding what the resources section is. And of course, I've given you the, the section name right over here. And we talked about it, uh, we, or we actually touched upon it in the previous video when examining the uh, the PE header or analyzing the contents of the PE header. And um, in the, for that particular malware sample, with the credential stealer or the password stealer, uh, it didn't have a resource section so um, that's primarily why i'm covering it after that video so uh, the resources section contains all the necessary files and information that are used or required by the executable so the uh, simple example of this is of course icons dialogues um, configuration files etc right now that's of course it goes for both malware and legitimate programs but why is it important uh, in malware analysis to actually inspect or examine the resources resources uh, section well first of all attackers can utilize the resources section to store more malicious files and data like payloads droppers configuration information etc so uh, they can use it to store additional files that are malicious in nature so again as i've just said payloads droppers that uh, can then extend the functionality of the malware in uh, in, in, in the whole really so uh, the second reason uh, as to why it's so important is of course the resource section is very useful as it can contain information about the origin of malware so it contains information about uh, where or on in which locale the malware was compiled in so again that can give you an idea of its origin and of course it gives you info like the configuration information so we'll take a look at all of this uh, shortly uh, so as for the tools that we'll be using, we can of course use PE Studio to inspect uh, the resources that exist, um, you know, for a particular executable or a sample. And Resource Hacker, that will actually allow us to view the, re uh, the various resources that exist um, and to sort of inspect them closely. So uh, let's get started. All right, we're back in Flare VM, and uh, for the purpose of this video, I've downloaded a few more samples that do indeed have a resources section to demonstrate uh, the importance of actually analyzing the resources section. Um, so I've downloaded a few more samples, and the link uh, to these particular files will be in the description section if you are interested in them. Uh, they will only be useful for this particular video. So for ransomware, I've downloaded the Locky ransomware right over here. And uh, I also downloaded an adware variant here, which I, I'm not really sure the name of the, uh, the adware, but in any case, um, let me just delete uh, the extracted file here so that we can analyze them uh, individually. So um, let's get started. Uh, so we'll start off with the ransomware, and this is the Locky ransomware. So let me just extract this here. Um, infected. We'll just get, we'll extract this, and uh, let's uh, start by analyzing it here with exe info pe. Um, if we take a look at the sections here or the section names, we can see that this uh, this particular sample has been packed, and it's a uh, UPX. So uh, UPX here, and we also have the resources section, which is interesting. So um, of course, if we use the exe info p, it, it gives us instructions on how to unpack it. So let's do that just that. So I'll open up a command prompt window here and I'll say upx uh, decompress and of course, sorry, upx uh, decompress and I'll drag the file here and uh, we can just uh, execute that and it'll unpack it for us. So you can see that the file has a new size here. So what we'll do now is uh, we can actually bring this into exe info PE and or PE Studio, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, so if we take a look at the sections now or the section names, you can see we have the text, uh, our data, data, GFIDS, TLS, and the resources section. We are primarily interested in this section right over here. So if we drag this into PE Studio, uh, we'll just wait for this to load up. We can, of course, go through all the information we were able to gather. And of course, th this gives us the information right over here, all the useful information. So we can see as for the signature, it is a uh, Microsoft Visual C++. So it was built on that language primarily. Um, as for the first byte, we can see it's MZ. Uh, so it actually confirms this is a PE 32-bit executable with uh, the GUI as the subsystem. However, if we go into the resources section, which it does have now, we can see that it has it doesn't have anything that looks particularly malicious. So 
uh, let us just take a, a closer look at all of this uh, so you have the type of resource and you can sort it out alphabetically uh, the name which is just um, is just a, the binary name um, the file offset so you can actually navigate to it the signature so again it gives you information about it uh, so if you take a look at the version here we have a cursor bitmap which is interesting we'll take a look at that shortly and the language the language seems to be the most important piece of information here and you might be saying well why is it the most important information because this gives us an idea of uh, where this uh, this particular piece of malware was compiled so you can see for the cursor and the cursor group uh, that's uh, that was done on a computer that uh, has the locale set to English United States which you know could be anywhere for anyone who speaks English uh, however for the bitmap and the version it looks like this uh, th these both were done or compiled on a computer um, that had the, the locale set to French uh, on you know France in general uh, so that gives us an idea of where this malware has come from. So we can uh, sort of explore the version here, which again gives us information about the versioning system uh, that is implemented into this piece of software. So you can see the language is set right over here. Uh, we have the internal name, so Orge Figuero, uh, and of course that gives us a bit more information about the author. However, that could be a very ge generic name, but can be used for, for sorting this out. So if we go back to the ransomware, and of course, um, we drag this into the resource hacker, which comes pre-installed with, um, uh, with uh, the Flare VM. So if we take a look at it closely over here, you can see for the cursor, this just gives us a generic cursor. And of course, you can take a look at the binary view here which again gives you the, the content or the data in its binary, um, in its binary form. Uh, for the bitmap, uh, the bitmap gives us uh, the logo of the ransomware, so just a picture of it here, so that gives us some very basic information about it. Uh, the cursor group again gives us the cursor group and of course the size over here. Uh, version information, which seems to be the most important, again gives us what we already knew or we were able to inspect in um, in PE Studio. So this is really, this file really doesn't contain anything malicious uh, within the resources section. If you were to come across a binary in the resources section, you would actually come across a section called binary, or uh, you could you would come across an executable or a particular file like a dropper. Um, so let's take a look at the other sample, which is the adware. So let me just extract this here. So I'll just uh, put in the password infected right over here. And we can open this up and uh, let's first of all check if it's if it's packed and um, there we are so yeah it does look like it is packed so UPX0 UPX1 and the resources section so let's unpack this really quickly uh, so I'll open up the command window here UPXD and um, we will just drag this file in here and let's extract it and this had a poorer ratio but again that's really not that bad and you can see that the size of the file has increased uh, significantly so what we'll do is we'll open this up with PE Studio just to uh, check out what information we can get some about the uh, the sample so again we can see that um, this is just a generic piece of uh, uh, of adware here which is considered malware so uh, again, built in Microsoft Visual C++ uh, version 8. Uh, it looks like it is a downloader. So it downloads uh, particular malicious files and then, you know, uh, sets up ads throughout the entire operating system. The file type is executable CPU. So again, uh, Windows PE 32-bit executable with the subsystem set at G, uh, GY. Um, so with this one, we have a bit more information, right? So we also have a manifest file. So for the manifest file, that gives you information about the actual executable here and the uh, the various uh, technology and uh, version information that was used. Um, so uh, we can explore this even further, of course, using a tool like Resource Hacker. So we'll just open up Resource Hacker here and um, let's just check out what information we have so for the icon we get the standard windows setup icons or the installer icons which are sorted out in different sizes so nothing special there uh, for the menu we get a menu here which again gives us a bit of a setup menu that is being used and we get some very interesting information here so you can see the language is set to chinese and the sub language is chinese simplified so let me just bring up the malware sample here uh, well, this is the Locky ransomware. Let me just get rid of that. Um, I think this is the one. 
No, that's still the locky ransomware. Let me just open up the one we're working with, which is the adware. Uh, if we open this up in PE Studio once again, and uh, we take a look at the resources section, you can see that uh, all of these uh, or all of these resources have uh, the language set to Chinese simplified. So that gives us an idea of the origin of this piece of malware. In this particular case, it looks like this malware was compiled on a Chinese computer. Um, so that gives us an idea of where it was compiled. So uh, you can take a look at the various resources here. So that's the menu for the dialog. We get a, an entire dialog box here with Chinese text for buttons. Uh, so yeah, this uh, again, it confirms to us that this does use the graphical user interface. Um, so nothing much we can get from that apart just uh, for, from the fact that it is in Chinese. For the file version, we essentially just get uh, the generic name that's been given to the file. So we can see that they've just called it a downloader. Now, of course, that is completely false because this is a uh, 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 its uh, primary function is to actually, uh, you know, spam your system with ads. Um, so nothing much there. As for the manifest, again, we get information like the um, we get information like the encoding. Uh, let's take a look at what other information we can find here. Uh, the supported operating system ID. Uh, so just uh, random information there. Uh, nothing helpful was found here. But again, that's just a basic example of what the resources section will contain. We will be going through samples that actually do have various malicious files within the resources section. So do stay tuned for that. And um, we should now move, be moving to malware classification. So I'll be seeing you in that video.